Newman projections, that'll be the topic of this lesson in my organic chemistry playlist. Now, we're in the middle of an entire chapter on alkanes, and we spent the whole first half of the chapter learning how to name alkanes, and this latter half is looking at different ways that we represent alkanes, the different conformations of alkanes. And the Newman projection is a really useful tool for looking right down a carbon-carbon bond axis. And a carbon-carbon single bond, as long as it's not part of a ring, is just free to spin, just to rotate in space, so to speak. And the Newman projection allows us to take a look at the different groups and their relationships as that bond rotates. So, and the, the relative energies of the different conformations it adopts. Now, if this is your first time joining us, my name is Chad, and welcome to Chad's Prep, where our goal is simply to make science both understandable and maybe even enjoyable. Really? Now this is my brand new organic chemistry playlist and I'll be releasing these lessons weekly throughout the 2020-21 school year. So if you don't wanna miss one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, you'll be notified every time I post a new video. So Newman projections. Now before we get to a little more of a complicated example than the one we're gonna start with, so the standard place to start is what we call butane. And we're definitely gonna start there, but rather than putting it on the format of the board here, I think it'd be really instructive if you actually see a model of butane and match it up with the different conformations in a Newman projection. Unfortunately, my model kit is rather small, as is yours in all likelihood, and I highly recommend you build this model. Uh, however, if we take a look at my document cam, it'll be a little easier to see what I mean. So if you're going to understand Newman projections, I highly suggest you build a model similar to this one right here. So rather than looking at a normal perspective here, so if you look here, this hydrogen right here is coming out at you. It's a wedge, and this one's coming out at you as well as a wedge. And these two back here are both corresponding to dashes. They're going away from you. And then the methyl group here and the methyl group here, both in the plane. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this molecule 90 degrees and give ourselves a little bit different perspective. And this is the perspective we're looking at when we look at a Newman projection. So in this case, this would correspond to what's called the anti-conformation. It's a special type of staggered conformation. And you can see why they call it staggered, because the three bonds coming off the front carbon that I can see are exactly in between the three bonds coming off the back carbon that I can see. So hence, that's a staggered conformation. Now, there's an infinite number of possible co combinations, because we can just start rotating this one degree, one degree, one degree, one degree, you know, at a time. And so there's an infinite number of combinations. And out of that infinite number of possible conformations, we only really draw six of them. And we go to the extremes. Uh, and that would be the high energy and low energy extremes. And the staggered conformations here are the lower energy extremes. So and we're going to start rotating this 60 degrees at a time until we get back to this anti-conformation. So as we rotate it 60 degrees apart, we get to our first eclipse conformation. You can see why they call it an eclipse conformation. The front carbon's three bonds are exactly in front of the back carbon's three bonds, hence eclipsing. So, and this is, ends up being higher energy, and its reason it ends up being higher energy is the atoms are as close as they could possibly be together. So, and the bigger the atoms, the more they'd be bumping into each other. We call it steric hindrance. But also, the electrons and the bonds are as close as they would ever be together. And electrons being negatively charged, that's a repulsion, and that's high energy as well. So, and again, the atoms being near each other call steric hindrance. So, the bonds and the electrons uh, repelling each other uh, is called torsional strain. So, steric hindrance or steric strain, and then torsional strain as well. And those are the two reasons why these eclipsing interactions are the highest energy, because we're going to have the greatest amount of steric and torsional strain. So if we rotate it another 60 degrees, we're going to be back to another, whoops. so I went over a little bit there, but back to another staggered conformation. So in this case, uh, this staggered is not near as good as the anti-conformation we had just a second ago, and that's because this carbon and this carbon are now only 60 degrees apart. So in being only 60 degrees apart, we call that a gauche interaction, and so there's more steric hindrance associated with these gauche interactions uh, than we had in the anti-conformation. Uh, and in this case, the bigger these groups are in the gauche interactions, the higher energy they are. And so oftentimes we'll rank different Newman projections for a molecule based on how many gauche interactions it has, as well as uh, how large are the groups that are involved in these gauche interactions. Uh, but keep in mind, these Gaussian interactions are only ever in a staggered conformation. We'd never talk about them in an eclipse conformation. If we rotate another 60 degrees clockwise here, we're back to another eclipse conformation. And this one's higher energy, not as stable as the last one we had as well, the last eclipsed. And in this case, because these two large methyl groups are now the ones eclipsing each other. The bigger the groups eclipsing each other, the higher energy as well. So not all eclipsed are equivalent and not all staggered are equivalent. Let's rotate it another 60 degrees. So, and now we're to another staggered conformation. And yet again, we have another gauche interaction between the methyl groups. So rotate it another 60 degrees. 
we're back to another eclipse confirmation, not as bad as the last one, e uh, equivalent energy to the first one we showed. And then finally, rotating it back another 60 degrees gets us back to our lowest energy, most stable confirmation, the anti-confirmation, uh, in this case, a special staggered confirmation. So this is what I, uh, you know, kind of the understanding you need. It's helpful if you see it in a model, and hopefully this helps, uh, but let's draw some pictures. All right, so now that we've looked at butane, we want to take a look at a little more complicated example here and some sort of variant of 2-chlorobutane. And I say some sort of variant because turns out there's two different what we call stereoisomers of 2-chlorobutane, but you'll learn that in the next chapter. So I don't want to get off on an aside there, but that's why I said some variant here. So if with 2-chlorobutane with here, common question you get on an OCHEM exam is simply draw the lowest energy conformation of this lovely molecule, and they usually specify which bond you want to look down. Now, in this case, if you were numbering this to name this, so we'd make sure that chlorine ended up on the lowest possible number, and so we'd number it left to right instead of right to left. And in our question, I'm asking you to look down the C2, C3 bond axis and draw the lowest energy conformation. So you want C2 to be the front carbon and C3 here to be the back carbon. And as you recall, we represent that front carbon with a dot, and then we're going to have a circle representing that back carbon. Now we should also probably keep in mind that we're going to see all the bonds coming off of C2 and C3 except for that bond between them. That's the invisible bond right behind that front carbon where we're looking. And in this case, we'll put my red eye right there. So, and we're going to look right down that bond axis right there. And we're going to see the chlorine coming off that front carbon and this methyl group right there coming off there. But we'll also see the hydrogen that's on the dashed position. So, and on the back carbon, we'll see the three other bonds coming off of it as well, this methyl group right here. And then also, it's got a pair of hydrogens that are not drawn in. And I wanna draw those in just so we can find them on our Newman projection here. Now, cool. Now we could technically draw all six of the major conformations and keep in mind once again that there's an infinite number of possible conformations. We just usually only draw the three eclipsed and the three staggered. So. However, question on the test is usually just going to have you draw the lowest energy is a really common question. That's the question at hand here. And so knowing that we're looking for the lowest energy confirmation, we can just ignore all the eclipsed confirmations and just draw the staggered ones. Now we're looking right down the bond axis between C2 and C3. And if we're looking at it from the perspective of the molecule as it's drawn, as it's provided on your study guide here, then the bond that's in the plane is right below where we're looking. And so on the front carbon, we would have our bond in the plane that's right down the middle, not on the left, not on the right, but pointing straight down, not straight up. So, and then we'd have a bond off to the right and one off to the left. Now looking at it from this perspective, off to the right hand side here is going to be what's out in front of the board. And then off to the left hand side would be going into the board. And keep in mind that's looking at it from this perspective so that I've got here, but notice I could look down this C3, C2 axis exactly backwards. And now all of a sudden the wedged bonds going out in front of the board would be on my left hand side and the dashes would be on my right. And so there, I just want to make sure you realize there's not like one way this is always going to work. It really depends on your perspective. And so again, I want to look down the C2, C3 bond axis just as it's drawn right here. And so the way we look at this, the bonds on the right, again, are going to be, so the wedged bonds coming out in front of the board. And so that's going to be that chlorine right there. So, and then the bond on the left-hand side are going to be the ones behind the board. And that's going to be the hydrogen right there. Cool. And then the bond straight down, that's not on the right or the left, because it's in the bond of the plane here. That's the methyl group. Let's just draw him in as well. Okay, so there's the bonds on the front carbon. Now the back carbon, we represent with that circle. Again, there's carbon three. And as long as we're looking at the lowest energy confirmation, we wanna make sure we're looking at staggered confirmations. And it turns out this is represented being in a staggered confirmation. But if it wasn't, we'd still be looking to just draw the staggered ones. And so I've staggered the, the back carbon's three bonds we can see in between the front carbon's three bonds so we get a staggered confirmation. Now, if we look at that back carbon, his bond that is straight up above where we're looking in this place, that's where his bond to a methyl group is. So, and once again, this wedged hydrogen is the one that's on the right when looking at it from this perspective. And so it's on the right hand side of our diagram, whereas the dashed one is the one on the left. And I realize they're both hydrogens, so who cares? But I just want to make sure you can identify them properly in case in your example, you're on the hook for, they're not the same. Cool. So, but this is one of our staggered confirmations. And in this case, I'm going to keep that front carbon exactly the same. And I'm going to rotate the back carbon clockwise and get the other two staggered confirmations on the board here as well. And so for that 
front carbon, we still got the methyl at the bottom, we've got the chlorine on the right, and we've got the hydrogen on the left. But now I'm gonna take and rotate the back carbon around 120 degrees. So, and again, the point is we're, we're trying to draw the lowest energy conformation, so we still wanna draw a staggered conformation, but we just wanna get the other two. And so in this case, that methyl group's gonna end up over here now. So, and these two hydrogens are gonna end up in these two positions. Cool, and finally, one more time, I'm gonna rotate that back carbon 120 degrees yet again to get the last remaining staggered conformation here. So again, I'm gonna leave that front carbon alone. Methyl groups on the bottom, chlorines on the right, hydrogens on the left. So, and now we can see that this methyl group is going to end up over here on the left-hand side. And those two hydrogens are in the other two spots. Okay. Now our goal here is to get that, that goal here is to get that lowest energy conformation. And if that's the case, if you're, you're trying to decide between different staggered conformations, look for those gauche interactions. So if we start with this first one here, so we've got a gauche interaction right here. And recall just a gauche interaction is always in a staggered conformation and it's when you have two groups next to each other that are both not hydrogens, they're both bigger than hydrogen. And so in this case, this is not a gauche because it involves hydrogen. These are both hydrogens, so that's not a gauche. This is not a gauche. This is not a gauche. This is not a gauche because they all involve at least one hydrogen. But this is a gauche interaction. So we've got one gauche interaction in this conformation. We've got two in this one. And so, so far, this is a lower energy conformation than the second one. And then we'll go to the last one here and we've got one gauche interaction in this one. So it's definitely either gonna be the first or the third that is gonna be the lowest ener energy conformation. So you want the fewest gauche interactions to get the lower energy conformation, but you also want gauche interactions if you have to have them, so between smaller groups. And so the, re the real question comes down to, so what's smaller, a methyl interacting with a chlorine or a methyl interacting with another methyl? And so it's really just a chlorine versus a methyl because they have one methyl in common, the difference is a methyl versus a chlorine. And so, and it turns out a carbon bonded to three hydrogens actually takes up more space and leads to greater steric interactions than a chlorine. And so oftentimes we'll give you, you know, some kind of listing that kind of gives you a general idea of what, you know, kind of what energy is associated with maybe a gauche interaction with these groups. And what you should know though, is that a methyl group takes up quite a bit of space and an ethyl even more. And so much so that the methyl actually takes up more than a chlorine and that's worth filing away in your head. And so as a result, the interaction between two methyl groups is gonna be higher energy than this interaction between the methyl and the chlorine. And so this first one, it turns out is going to be our lowest energy conformation. That would be what we'd look to draw. And again, I drew all three so we could compare them and stuff like this. But if you were doing this on a test, you might be able to draw the first one and then kind of look at me like, well, if I rotate this back one around, that's gonna end up with two gauches and you might not even have to draw the second one and realize it. And then you might look and say, well, if I rotate it further around, the methyl group would be over here and that would be a gauche between bigger groups. And so you might actually get off the hook with not having to draw all three. So however, early on, maybe you do need to draw all your staggered conformations before you decide which one is the lowest energy. Now, if you got something out of this lesson, consider giving me a like and a share. Pretty much the best thing you can do to support the channel. And if you're looking for practice problems on Newman projections or you're looking for the study guides that go with this lesson, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.